why we continue with this series um, titled The Cross and The Cross and the Crown. Okay, the text is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11. I may not be reading the entire scripture, um, but the whole scripture is basically talking about the fact that Jesus died, first of all, the death on the cross, and therefore God highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every name must bow. So the cross comes before the crown. Without the cross, there is no crown. And that cross there represents sacrifice. Jesus paid the ultimate price. He made the ultimate sacrifice. And then consequently, God gave him the highest place of honor. The highest place of honor. And gave him the name above every name. That at his name, at the mention of his name, every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So the cross always comes before the sacrifice. And so Jesus also exhorts us to carry our cross and follow him daily. So everyone has a cross to carry. Unfortunately, this is one message that is rarely preached in the body of Christ today. And the unfortunate thing is that, you know, while we go about preaching other things, which are also very relevant, but this is a major um, factor. Some of those things we are preaching about um, may not even be necessary if we understand the concept of the cross and the crown. The cross and the crown. Everything takes its root from the cross. Without the cross, without the sacrifice of Jesus, there will be no crown. Without the fact that Jesus laid down his life, we would have no access to any inheritance. In fact, there will be no inheritance for you and I. It is a sacrifice that makes the inheritance a possibility. That's what gives us access also to, the, to, to those inheritance. Hallelujah. Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And that's how it is with life itself. God has designed the life to work according to the system. That nothing major, there, is no, there can be no major shift in any life, in any community without a sacrifice. The kingdom of darkness understands this point, this fact very well. Are very attuned to it, and they do it, and that's the reason for all the ritual. I mean, the, the, the concept or the principle of ritual murder is based on sacrifice. The concept or the principle of ritual murder is simply about sacrifice. That you cannot get something uh, meaningful without making a sacrifice. But sadly, um, you know, they go about it the wrong way. If those people understand that there is a, a, a right way to sacrifice and you sacrifice what is acceptable to God and get what you are looking for. But it's not the sacrifice of human beings. It's not the sacrifice of human beings. But it, it's a law in the spirit world. Sacrifice is a principle in the realm of the spirit. Celebrities understand this. Most politicians understand this. Some of the most powerful people on earth today understand this. That's why most of them belong to one occult or the other. The ones that don't belong to one occult or the other, they, are, they hold on to God tenaciously. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And in those occultic environments, sacrifices at some level are demanded. There are some things you cannot get. There are some help and support you cannot get from the um, ruling spirits of those occults without making certain sacrifices. Why? It's a principle. That's how it works in the realm of the spirit. To get to breakthrough to certain dimensions in any area of life, there are certain things that have to be done. And you must be careful for those of you who jump from church to church. There are pastors, sadly, who are also doing this thing from the kingdom of darkness. 
They seek for membership. They seek for wealth. They seek for power and all that. And they go to Satan. And they go to Satan to make sacrifices. And then they come back to church. And then they shock while people see things happening and all that. And, you know, of course they glorify God. Not knowing that God is not the one behind those things. They are demonic powers. And anybody, anywhere, anybody you see to listen to, and especially the ones that lay hands, they transmit spirits. That's why you must be very discerning. And there's going to be an increase of it in this end time, according to the scripture. I gave a couple of the, um, definitions of sacrifice last week. But let me just, you know, I mention one of them. Sacrifice is to surrender or a surrender of something of value as a means of gaining something more desirable or, or preventing some evil. So you surrender something that has value in order to gain something more desirable or something or to prevent an evil occurrence. Okay, last week I talked about Abraham, Cain, um, Jacob and Esau. I think I talked about Jacob and Esau. Hallelujah. Joseph also made sacrifices. Let's look at his own sacrifice. Give me um, Genesis 39 from verse 7 very quickly. Genesis 39 from verse 7. And each of those gentlemen that made sacrifices there was always a reward. And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Now, sacrifice is not only what you give. Sacrifice is also what you refuse to take. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Sacrifice is not only what you give. Sacrifice is also what you refuse to take. That bribe you refuse to take. Is also a sacrifice. That, that huge amount of money you refuse to take is sacrifice. God sees and God honors. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with, what, what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Against God. So, so Joseph was God conscious. Joseph was God conscious. You see, when you lose consciousness of God and you are more conscious of man than God, you are likely, you are likely um, to sin. You are more vulnerable to sin. You are more vulnerable to satanic traps and snares. You should be more aware and conscious of the God factor. What was the highest sin man can do? What penalty? What was the highest penalty? At the most, you know, disfavor. But you see, with God, it's far more, more than that. So your consciousness should be of God. You say, whoever you walk to please is the one that will reward you. Jesus made that clear in Matthew chapter 6. He said, for those of them who do stuff so that they can be noticed by men, he said, they already have their reward from men. But those who do it for God, say, God himself is the one that will reward them. So whoever you walk to please is the one that... Some who walk, in quote, claiming to be walking for God, but they actually... Walking to please man. And how do you know? It's very easy. When men take decisions that don't favor them, they withdraw their service. So who were you walking to serve? Who were you serving? You claim to be serving God, but when man made a decision that didn't favor you, you withdrew your service. Some will stop going to church because man made a decision that didn't favor them. I stopped going to church. So who were you worshipping or were you serving? Oh, I serve God. I serve no man. I serve God. You see, it's not in the claim. They say action speaks louder than words. 
your commitment will be tested. Your claims will be tested. Your claims will be tested. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It, 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 I mean, it, um, um, a man and a woman they come to the pulpit to make take a vow forever until death do us part. It, it will be tested. Things will happen to test it. For one of my friends, it happened in less than a year. They visited me and, you know, less than a year, I mean, she was pregnant, heavily pregnant. I was seeing them up and then we had gone short right around my area. Bah, bah. Before I knew what was happening, the guy had disappeared. The pregnant wife was left alone with me. I had to hold her and guide her to safety. For 10 minutes, the guy didn't show up. For better or for worse, he was tested. And he was found to be wanting. It disappeared. And I, I was saying to myself, ah, if not that they're already married, I will tell this guy. <laughs> Ordinary gunshot. Would that kind of man say, shoot me instead of my wife? Yeah. <laughs> Commitment will be tested. Commitment will be tested. Your commitment to God will be tested. Commitment to God in your place of service will be tested. You hear gunshot, pack, pack. Will you say come to church? It may not be fiscal gunshot. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says Joseph refused. Let's go get back to that scripture very quickly. So sacrifice is not only what you take, what you what you give, it's also what you refuse to take. He said, There's no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Next verse. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day, she was haunting him. Satan doesn't give up. He will keep haunting you day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day, hoping that you will break, hoping that you will succumb, hoping that you will forget your commitment. Day by day, day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. Next verse. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me, but he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Now, now Joseph didn't know about the scripture that was going to be written thousands of years later, where Paul said, flee. You see, even though he didn't know about the scripture, the scripture was not written then. When you are in communion with God, there are some things you will know, even if you have not read them. There are some principles you just know. Why? Because of your communion with God. In your place of communion with God, what is happening is that God is showing you himself. God is revealing his nature to you. You are becoming acclimatized to God's nature and his way of doing things. So without even hearing it is written, you know innately what to do and what not to do, what the will of God is in specific scenarios. That's why communion with God, intimacy with God is not an option for a believer. Coming to church every Sunday alone does, is not, it's not um, that's not the intimacy we are talking about. Even though that's a step. But that's not, the intimacy we are talking about is beyond coming to church or in addition to coming to church, your private, personal communion with God. Your, every child of God must have a quiet time. It's a must. It's like saying every human being must, must feed. If you don't feed, you die. It's as simple as that. So there are some things you don't resist, you flee. Are you with me? There are some things, let me tell you, 
history has shown that it doesn't matter how powerful you are, there are some things you don't resist. Don't learn by experience, though. There's, listen, it may be as smart as you resigning from a job just to save yourself. That's a sacrifice. That's a sacrifice you are making for your relationship with God and for your marriage. Is somebody here? Yes. If you need to resign that job, resign it, quit it. Especially when it comes to emotional things. Never, ever trust your emotion. I don't care who you are. To betray you. Someday. <laughs> and that mighty man will just fall like a pack of cards. Just with so much ease, you'll be wondering how. A whole me. That's why you got there. Because you taught a whole you. Now God gave you opportunity to understand that you are nothing without him. Just learn to do the needful, that's all. Just learn to do the right thing. Let me say this. I don't know why I'm emphasizing this. There is no human being under heaven that cannot fall. I don't care who you are. Even if you are Pope squared. Pope raised to power 10. There's no human being. Just a matter of time and the right setting. The right setting and then time, enough time. The antidote is flee. That's all. The people who have successfully maintained themselves are those who heed to that counsel, flee. It's not because they're resisted. You resist a certain stage, you have to run. Otherwise, your days are numbered. He's just counting one, two, three, four, finally. Don't be your portion. May God give you wisdom. And I'm not talking to just men. Maybe even more women. Because, you know, in your simple mind, just trust every time they can hurry. And, uh, why am I going in this direction? Okay. And let me say this. Emotional affair is as dangerous in fact is a precursor to sexual affair emotional affair gets to a certain stage where sexual affair is inevitable it will happen you, you know that this person is two people nothing only God will come from heaven to stop it no human being their will their whatever cannot stop it it will happen. It doesn't matter who they are. That's why the recommendation flee. Because God is all wise. It's like a slippery slope. There's a stage you get to, you can walk. But there's a stage you go beyond that it, you, would, you would hit the floor. You just find yourself rolling. You, you must hit the floor. So why get there in the first place? Emotional affair, you know that it's already happening when you cannot do without talking to a certain person. It's a certain human being. Where if you have not spoken to that person, it's like somebody has not taken her drugs. <laughs> when you get to that point, that person is finished. Run to God or maybe run to a, your pastor. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. When every, every minute you are testing, you are calling, you can't wait to get to work. You can't wait to get to the bus stop. Because you know that you enter the same and you sit in the same Praise the name of Jesus Christ. If you have to take a longer route, start taking a longer route. You can't wait. In fact, it's even a... You can't wait to get to church. That's the worst. 
Because you are now distracted. It is no longer God. So, so every minute you are, you are waiting for that time and no pastor will come. And I know pastor will say, greet your neighbor. Ah. So if pastor has not said, greet your neighbor, pastor, there's something that is missing. Greet your neighbor. Take this home. Emotional affairs precede sexual affairs. So when you see yourself becoming overly um, connected to somebody of the opposite sex, address it fast and intercept it. I've seen many wrong things happen that were never planned. The people involved never planned it, never anticipated it, vowed that it can never happen, but it happened because they don't understand the laws, how things work. If they understood how things work, such things would never have happened. And some understood, but they felt like, no, 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 it can happen to others, but it can't happen to me. That's the worst delusion. That's the worst delusion, because it, 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 it gives you, it puts you in a place where you can't put caution anymore. And then it also removes you from divine safety. Because if you feel like that, it means that you don't need God. And when God steps aside, you discover that you are an ordinary, empty human being. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, yes, that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. You see, that's the issue. Hell has no fury like what? A woman's gone. So, Joseph had to choose to either succumb, and you know, succumbing to Potiphar's wife was a, the fastest way to miracles. You know that? Oh, he will no longer be a houseboy. Because she is the power broker in the house. She'll just tell the husband, say, don't you think that this boy... His level of skill, he has outgrown this kind of job. Let's get him help us to be helping him. And then um, with the kind of, you know, you cannot find any faithful person in this land like this one. So we have to raise his salary by 10. 10 times more. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And she will be serving him. Just the same way she serves her husband. Even better. Oh, better. Once the husband is out, if she gives him three pieces of meat, she will load Joseph with five. That was passport to a life of freedom and financial liberty. God has done it. As a pastor, I'm aware that sometimes... Some testimonies people share, they don't give us a detail. <laughs> if they give us a detail, then it will not be a testimony. It's just that you can't ask people to be explaining. Explain. But as a pastor, if you are sharp, um, you can connect the dots. Praise the name of Jesus. So, so Joseph had opportunity of a lifetime. Is somebody here with me? Yes, sir. But somebody could be that, ah! This is what pastor has been prophesying. Yes. Ten times more. Yes, Father. He didn't tell us how it's going to happen. <laughs> he just said it's going to happen. Maybe this is the way for me. Because you have ways for everyone. Maybe this is the way for me. Then Satan will now bring all kinds of lies. He will tell you that sin is sin. There is no sin that weighs more than the other. It's not true. Sexual sin is unique. Because sex is a gateway to the spirit world. That's why, that's why scripture says that when you, are, when you have sex with someone, you are, you are interchanging spirits. 
you are entertaining spirits. So Satan will not bring all kinds of stuff. You know, it, sin is sin. I mean, you lie, you do this, it's the same thing. So why not do this and then shh. Remember the dream you had. He will not bring the dream. This is how it's going to be fulfilled though. There's no other way. You don't have qualification, you don't have education. There's no other way. How else do you think it's going to happen? Think it now. How else? Reason it. This is the only way. After all, this will be the only sin you'll be committing. There's nobody in this earth without all kinds of lies. So, Joseph had that opportunity. He had that privilege. He had the opportunity. Everything was set. For, for you, it could be an opportunity to change figures. But, but listen, God is watching. Because before God shows up, most times Satan will come first. Sometimes before God, when God has given you a promise, before he moves to bring about the fulfillment, Satan will give you an alternative. Yes. Why is that alternative? Because Satan knows how dangerous it is for him if you wait for and get what God is bringing. So he will give you something that looks like it. So you don't get, a, you know, you, you become distracted. And then all that was happening, but somehow, Joseph said, no way. No way. I'd rather die a slave than do this against God. I'd rather die a slave. I'd rather die a slave. One day, we were in, 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 while we were in school, um, the lecturer gave us a test. But it was very difficult. Nobody understood it. And it was going to form 20% of our whatever. So I got to school that morning. They were supposed to submit. Everybody was cheating. Everybody, everybody, including the believers, tongue talking, you know. <laughs> everybody was cheating. And I came, I saw it. And um, I refused. They said, everybody said, you having me. Like, but you fail, you fail, you fail, you fail. You better do this. Every blah, 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 blah. I said, no, I, I won't. I won't. You fail, you fail. You. I would rather fail. So the, the lecturer came, everybody submitted. After the lecture, Lecturer said, it's cancelled. Come and see the shame on the believers who had compromised. And everybody turned around and started looking at me. Everybody turned around and started looking at me. It's not what you profess. What you profess will be tested. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. To be tested. So Joseph said, no way. And then what happened? That decision cost him everything. He was lied against. He was framed. Listen, doing the writing doesn't mean that every time you do the writing, voila, an angel just show up and give you a reward. No lie. Sometimes doing the writing will cost you. Doing the right thing and send you to prison. But when you go to prison, go to prison with dignity. Is somebody here with me? Go there with dignity and honor. Go there with dignity and with honor. Yeah. Go there with dignity and honor. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He was thrown to jail. For two years, it was like, I did the right thing, and is this what I'm going to get from it? There will be times like that. 
And, and sometimes God will not be in a hurry to deliver you. Because he's watching to see if you will regret doing the right thing. If you will regret doing the right thing. Praise the name of Jesus. I tell some of my friends today in ministry, I say I don't regret my decisions. What decision? What most people do is that when they are living in ministry, you know, they break the ministry. They take members from that ministry to go and start the work and all that. And then so that gives them a lot of speed and, you know, a whole lot because that comes with finances. It comes with human resources and ETC. When I was living, I was in a position in my, my church where in terms of influence amongst the pastors, by God's grace, God gave me the strongest influence in that ministry at the headquarter. I refused to tell anybody I was living because I knew the impact. But somehow it got leaked. And when it got leaked, some people came to me and said, ah, we are following. I said, never. If you come, I'm going to send you back. I won't receive you. I won't receive you. I told them, I'm not going to break what God has helped use me to build. If it's the only way to excel or succeed in ministry, I'd rather fail than succeed. And they're looking at me like, are you okay or, or, or what? Some even gave me their cards. Say, see me and I'm going to, when I leave them, I tear the card. Would you have made a difference? A huge one, mega difference. Mega difference. That's why right, today, till today, till tomorrow, I will never have any sleepless night as somebody is going to leave and break the ministry. Try it. You'll have an encounter. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know that seed speaks. Yes. Sacrifices speak. It was a sacrifice I made then. I don't joke with a man of sacrifice. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, it caused so much pain. So much. So much. Hunger, embarrassment, and ETC. I was telling someone if I have the opportunity to do it again, I'll do the same thing. With all the cost. There's nothing like peace of mind. Knowing that God is pleased with your action. Even if it's not in quote, physically or materially profiting you. Know that God is pleased. Any reward you don't get here, it means that God is accumulating it for you on the other side. Yes. And that reward on the other side, a thousand, a billion times exceeds any reward you on earth. One of the surprises in heaven will be to see people that we despise, dishonored, and see them highly esteemed and glorified in heaven. And see some people we highly esteem here on earth. See them, you know, take common place in heaven. Common place. Jesus made it clear. He said, what men highly esteem, heaven disdains. And what men disdains, heaven highly esteem. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what happened? Joseph languished in prison for two years. After two years, God gave Pharaoh a dream he couldn't interpret and, and shut down the spiritual gateway of all the magicians so that they could not assess any information regarding that dream. Why? Because somebody, somebody's destiny was tied to it. Hallelujah. There are many things God will shut down for your sake. Amen. Yeah. But before then, there are certain sacrifices you must inevitably make. You must come to that point of decision. 
You say, whatever Satan will offer you is a fragment of what God has in store. But the worst part of it is that when you take what Satan offers you, it comes with lack of peace. What is the essence of having everything and have no peace? Ah! Value peace. Value peace. Value, value mental sanity. The Bible says that the blessings of God makes rich and does not add sorrow. And then suddenly Joseph interprets the dream and what happens? Overnight success. But that overnight success, you see what people call overnight success is never overnight success. Very soon some people will tell you your success is overnight. They won't know the sacrifice you've been making before now. The making sacrifices, denying yourself of certain things, giving up certain things, quitting on certain things, just for what God has. And then suddenly, in 24 hours, that's what happened with Joseph. And then that same day, Pharaoh said, listen, we can't find anybody that, is, that qualifies for this job apart from this prisoner. As convict. As con. What a qualification. You know, in most countries, once you are an S con, there are certain things you cannot, even job self, you can't do. Hey. But God knows how to rewrite your story. God of my present, God of my future. Oh, me. You hold it all together, God of my presence, God of my feet. Lord, you write my story. You write my story. Lord, you hold it all together. Hey, you are the God of my presence.